What's up guys, welcome to this new Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really funky abstract animation. Uh, it shouldn't take too long and it's quite easy to make as well. Right, on with the tutorial. Okay, so you've got Blender open now. So just delete Mr. Cube here and hit Shift A. Add a mesh and we're going to add a UV sphere. Hit the tilde key and hit 3 so we zoom on in. We are going to hit Tab, go into Edit Mode. Come to edge up here and hit edge split. Okay, so come out of edit mode and come to your modifier section, just this little spanner here, and hit add a modifier and we're gonna add a smooth modifier. Now what that's gonna do is it's going to make little squares along all the subdivisions. And if you haven't done the edge split, like we did earlier, then that's not gonna work. Um, so make sure you do that. Um, and you can play with this factor. We're going to put it on about 1.5. Next thing, we're going to add a wireframe modifier. So just add that and bring the thickness down to about that 0 0.004. Add another modifier, and we are going to add a displace modifier. So click on that, and you're going to get this weird, funky disco ball thing. Now that's not what we want, so uh, the hierarchy is really important with the modifiers. So you want to make sure the displace modifier is at the top. So this one with the little uh, triangles, just click the arrow here and bring that up right to the top. Okay, now you want to add a texture to your displacement. So click here, add a new texture and come over to here. And here's our texture settings for the displacement. So change the type to marble. And that's looking crazy right now. So what we want to do is bring the depth all the way down and the turbulence all the way down. Now, you can bring the size wherever you want. We'll put it at two. We have this weird dummy shape from the thingies. So what we want to do is animate the displacement. So what we're going to do is hit Shift A and we are going to add an empty, add an empty cube, and we're gonna use this empty to basically modulate the um, displacement. And the way we do that is go to back to your sphere or weird dummy thing, and you want to go back to the modify settings of that object. And here in the displacement settings, under texture coordinate, you wanna add you want to change that to object and you want to assign it to your empty. If you bring up your timeline, just drag this up. We're going to set this to 120, so that's going to be five seconds long. Now, if you click on your empty, we're going to animate the rotation of this empty so it will be a seamless loop. So make sure you're at the start of your timeline. And before you do any animating, come up to your preferences. So go edit, preferences, and on animation, Make sure you have your default interpolation set to linear. Uh, this is so we have a seamless loop. It just looks a lot better. So we're going to animate it on the y-axis here. So if you make sure that you're on the first frame, click on this little keyframe here. Now come to the end of the timeline and make sure that's on 1 to 1. And hit 360 and apply keyframe. Now that that's playing, you're gonna see this really crazy animation here with these uh, little wireframe squares. So we want it to be a bit more tame. So go back to your sphere and on your displacement settings in the modifier section, drop this down to 0.1 and you're gonna get this really weird wobbly effect. It looks really cool. And maybe you can, you can play with the strength if you want a bit more uh, movement, maybe put it to two actually. Okay, now that is really weird. <laughs> it's really gooey. Uh, now we are going to add another modifier. So again, in your sphere, come to the top here, add another modifier, and we're gonna add a mirror modifier to make sure everything is evenly distributed. Down here, 
we're going to select X, Y, and Z, and we're going to select bisect. And now you get this really cool sort of jellyfish movement. And you can also scale the empty. Make sure you're scaling the empty though and not the sphere. But if you scale the empty up, the um, displacement's going to be a bit more subtle. So that looks really, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I think my next render I'm going to make a jellyfish because <laughs> that looks really awesome. Okay, delete this light. So click on the light, hit X and delete. Now click on the camera and we just want to reset the position and the rotation. So hit Alt G to reset the position and Alt R to reset the rotation. Now you can hit zero to toggle in and out camera view. And if you hit G and Z, you can bring it up to wherever you like, we'll say about here. So now that your camera's set up, we are going to add another sphere. So hit Shift A, add a mesh, and add a UV sphere, and scale that up to wherever the camera ends. So we'll say about here, hit zero. Make sure you can see everything. Yep, cool. Sweet, and we're gonna use this sphere to reflect light once we start shading the actual um, the displaced sphere. So we'll name this, I don't know, Jelly Reflections. And remember, you can always go here and change your factor of your smooth modifier as well if you want the squares a bit bigger, or you can create some really weird sort of abstract stuff. You can just play around with it really. Have a bit of fun, but we'll leave it where it was. Okay, next step, we're gonna start shading the actual object, so. Yeah, so hit Z and then eight, so we can go into rendered mode. Now you're not gonna be able to see anything because uh, the light's out and we're inside a sphere. So um, just make sure your overlays are on, so that blue bit's here. And we are going to make the world black and we're going to shade this jelly object thing. So come over here to your material settings. Oh, I forgot to say that's the world settings, by the way, uh, if you want to make the background black. Um, and then come over to the material settings, add a new material, and we're going to change this to an emission shader. So click on that, and we're going to make it a nice light blue. And we're going to pop the strength to about next step we're going to shade the reflections. Go to your material settings for the reflections, uh, add a new material, and leave it as principled shader. Pump the metallic up, drop the roughness all the way down. We need to go into render settings. Make sure you're on EV, and we're gonna add ambient inclusion, bloom, screen space reflections, that's the most important one, and motion blur. Now you can see the light sort of reflecting on the uh, on the sphere, but it's very subtle. If you want more reflections, just just come to your transform settings and scale it along either the the Y or the X. So we can bring it in to about here. If you want loads of reflections, but I think that's a bit too much. Maybe about here. And then on the x-axis, just copy that, make it equal. I'm just going to come out of rendered mode because my computer is not liking this. So yeah, if your computer is running a bit slow, just go into uh, go back into your normal viewport. And yeah, just uh, let's see how that looks. Cool. Next thing is we're going to drop the bloom a bit. So come to your Come to your render settings again and drop the bloom down to about here. Next thing is to we're gonna adjust the color management a bit. So let's uh <clears throat> let's drop the gamma down to about 0.8. We can animate the camera now. So if you click on the camera, we are going to animate this. So we're gonna animate it along the Z axis. So it's just gonna be a simple So it's gonna be a very simple animation. So if you uh, go back into your 3D viewport, and we're gonna make it animate like that, okay? So come back to wherever you had your camera, apply keyframe, 
and duplicate that. So click on the keyframe here, Shift D, and bring that over here. Come to frame 61 and just bring that in about here. And now hit A and hit T and you want to set the interpolation to Bezier this time just so it's a bit more smooth because you've changed the preferences to linear you want this camera animation to be on Bezier so now it's going to look like this I'm just going to take the overlays off I'm just going to we're going to go to our camera settings and we're going to change the focal length to 25 and I think that looks a lot cooler actually and now that we've done that, I'm just going to go to this keyframe and I want to just go back to your transform settings for the camera and I just want to bring the uh, Z axis a bit, a bit further down. I think about here and I'll just double click on that so you uh, reset the keyframe. Let's see how that looks. That's a lot better. Cool. All right, cool. I'm gonna wrap it up there now. All you have to do is render the animation. So if you hit Z6, just come out of rendered mode and come to your output settings. Change this to somewhere where you know you can find it. So I've got a little folder called Blender Renders and ooh, I think it's my first render of the month. So I'm gonna add a new one. I'm just going to name this floaty trip. Next, change the file format to FMPEG video and encoding. Make sure that's set to MP4. Leave it as H264. Change this to perceptually lossless. And then when you're done, just hit render and render animation. Okay, well, that pretty much wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Once you've rendered the animation, feel free to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you've done with it. Obviously, there's a lot more I could have done with it, um, but I'll leave it up to you guys to be creative. All right, cheers, bye.